I spent all of my grade six year trying to land a kickflip, never did, but I still wear skate brands. <laughs> James Watson is back in the news right now, not for good reason, turns out he's a racist. And this is the Watson of Watson and Crick, that tag team duo that we all learned about in our awkward phases in high school. We're cool for the summer. You would have likely also simultaneously known that they used an image from Rosalind Franklin that she had created using x-ray crystallography to really put together and understand that in fact, DNA was a double helix. Literally changed our lives forever. Pew, 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 pew. It was a little bit of a red flag because they didn't get her permission and she actually died before the Nobel prizes were given out for this discovery. So she didn't even get to be in the history books for that. It says that Watson, Crick and Wilkins won the Nobel prize for medicine and physiology in 1962 for discovering that DNA was a double helix even though they needed her image. <laughs> Okay, all that aside, he is back in the news. Yeah, he's still alive. He's 90. And again, started to spew some more racist nonsense. Not nonsense. I say again because in 2007, he came forward and tried to explain that he thought from a genetic perspective that black people were inferior to white people when it came to intelligence. This was based on no science, no studies. This is not true from a scientific perspective, but you could understand why a very famous scientist, V. Watson, who we all learned about saying these things could be dangerous. So obviously a bunch of alt-right people got super excited and used this to their advantage. Ah! This caused him to have to apologize to try and keep some credibility, but he's back because a documentary came out your views on the relationship between race and intelligence changed? No, not at all. I, I would like for them to change, that there be new knowledge which uh, says that uh, your nurture uh, is much more important than nature. But I haven't seen any knowledge, and uh, there's a difference on the average between blacks and whites on IQ tests. I would say the, the difference is uh, uh, it's genetic. Dr. Francis Collins of the National Institute of Health came forward to again explain how this was not true, that when it comes to any discrepancies in IQ studies between black and white people, it has nothing to do with genetics, it has to do with environment. And what he is saying is again, nonsense. Immediately, the lab that he worked for was like, we are taking away all of his titles. He no longer works here. This goes against everything that we believe, that we study, and this goes against science. This has brought up an interesting discussion in the science community. We already were infatuated with the story of Watson and Crick and Rosalind Franklin's image, but now with even current new news, we have to still decide whether Watson should go down in history books as a racist. His family says that they think that he was maybe taken advantage of. Again, he is 90. This documentary was filmed in the summer. They felt like, you know, he isn't in the right mindset. He's actually sick right now, so he can't really defend himself. But the documentary filmmaker said he gave him plenty of opportunity and this continued to be his perspective and his opinion. When I was reading his biography, Watson and Crick had all this information. They couldn't piece together what exactly DNA shape could be, how it could work based on like the sugar and the phosphates and like the math that they knew. And Watson actually went to a lecture by Rosalind Franklin where she put the image up Bruh. that they then needed later, but the image was in front of him. Bruh. She was explaining the information to him in a lecture and he zoned out. He wasn't listening. Got back to Crick. Crick was like, what did she say? And he was like, I don't really know. And then later, Maurice Wilkins brought the photo Bruh. and it clicked. Let me be your hero. So it's like not only did Watson and Crick sort of take the image without Rosalind Franklin's permission, but Watson had the information in front of him and he didn't put it together. So that part of history is also not super cute for him. And then he said horribly racist things with no scientific backing in 2007. And then he said horribly racist, that horribly, really, really racist things with no backing in 2019. And he's 90, he's obviously gonna die soon. So it's like, what do we do with his legacy? Science has been dominated by straight white dudes for years. When we look at minorities, whether it's LGBTQ2S people, racial minorities, women, they're all underrepresented in STEM based on their population sizes. And you know, him saying these things is extremely damaging and scary. And I would like to think that, oh, this doesn't make any sense coming from the science field. But like in this day and age, it 
kind of does. Definitely a testament that we need to do better. I think every time he's mentioned in a textbook for this very important discovery that all his baggage comes with him. Because if you are a very famous scientist and you do decide to spew hateful, ignorant things with no scientific backing, you need to suffer the consequences. And I think we need to understand why it is that these minorities aren't represented in science because likely they don't feel comfortable. Me, a gay, flaming, mahin, was always told that science was not for me. I was always told to do art. And yeah, I'm kind of a good painter. But I'm also obsessed with cellular biology and biological pathways. We are all allowed to love science. We are all allowed to love art. And we are all allowed to not have to love racist old men. For that reason, he's out of my history textbook. I'm going to be awarding that Nobel Prize in 1962 to Crick. Rosalind Franklin and Maurice Wilkins, although he was shady, he should have asked for her permission. Bruh. Okay, bye.